Okay, so what we want is we want to um, angle, let me make this bigger so it looks better. Okay, we're gonna angle our paper. We're gonna paint right on. If you wanna take notes, you can, or if you wanna just paint right on your paper, I recommend, since this is a watery painting, to tape it down. But if you want to put it in your notebook, that's okay too, because I really would love you to try this again and paint this again. So uh, it's a it's a really fun one. It, it'll be beautiful. And notice how the, the water is kind of a sea green, what we call sea green. We're going to use our blues and some turquoise, and we're going to have some fun, and we'll probably add a little bit of a wave, noticing how over here there's some dark patches in there. So... The idea for us is just to get this little layer of white kind of lacing across. So start, you really just need to do the one line that you want for your foam. And I recommend, and that's pretty dark. I recommend um, a little over halfway here. You could kind of see it up here halfway and then more than halfway down a, a little bit above halfway down excuse me and then a little bit in so we've got that grid line that we've talked about in the past and I, I really don't want that pencil line to show so uh, if you could do it really light that's fine if yours is a little different than mine that's fine too and if you have a flat brush Go ahead, let's use the flat brush today. A mop brush is okay too, but a mop brush will hold a lot of water. If you don't have a flat brush, there's no problem. You can use your, your big, um, you can use your big round brush. If that's not a problem. Okay, I'll get that out of the way. Okay, so we're going to start by getting it wet. Get Use your clean water and just Get your paper wet, bring it across. And go right up to that water line. To your foam line. So the idea is when we're painting, we're gonna think about Taking, take your paper towel. Remember how we made clouds? We're going to think about making how we made those clouds with our paper towel folded kind of longwise like this because this is going to be a wave. So we'll start with, I'm going to mix it up over here for you to see. I've got a blue, I've got the cerulean blue here. And then there's a phthalo blue, dirty water, clean water. There's a phthalo blue that's like a, or your emerald blue, emerald green, excuse me. Put it on the side here next to it so that they're both side by side. I'm gonna put this in my notes too. And I want you to see what, when you can actually, this, I, my paint must have dried already. So I need a little, I'd like it to be a little thicker. So it looks, you could see it's the emerald green. You can really see it now. So you're doing it on something. You're mixing on something next door so that you can, next to your painting, so that you can now gradually take the two colors and push a little bit of each color into the middle until you get a color that you like, a nice light, kind of a teal blue, really pretty. Um, the thinner, when you thin it out, it'll look more like what the picture is, but that's a real light. I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at my paint and I think I'm gonna add some lemon yellow. So I'll put a third color on my palette over here and add
add some lemon yellow in there and see if I can get it even a little lighter. Yeah, I like that. So you've kind of, you kind of have on your palette, you'll have three variations of color here. I have the blue, the blue and green, the blue and the emerald green mixed. And then I have some yellow over here mixed in with that color. So that's really going to be nice. You're going to like having those three colors that when we really want to work on our paper, we can go through. So I'm noticing that my paper, since I have it on a slant, because I wanted you to see my line, my water kind of dripped down here. I'm gonna, I would like to save about a, a band about like this, kind of keep it white for right now. So then take your <laughs> darkest color. You need to keep it white because we're gonna push in some sand and we need to have those white threads we're going to leave those white threads across. So you can go straight cerulean blue first. And the water, the horizon line is straight across. Then grab your mixture and put your mixture in. drew a line just for you guys to show but if you can in your mind think of where that line is that's good I put down the water let it soak in the paper and now we've added blue and then with my paper towel I'm going to try to pick up some uh, uh, one and maybe two wave sections it's just how we did the clouds I, I, you, we're leaving this section here. Do you see how I've got a white section here? Because that's where our foam and the sand are, are gonna meet. This is where the sand is touching the exact foam, but then the foam is gonna lace through this area. And I really want you to think ahead on the picture, how it was lacing, because we talked a little bit about that. Think ahead um, because you don't wanna fill it in because we want it to stay white. Okay, so I've got a couple waves there. I'm thinking I'd like a little more of this green. I like the green in the in the paint in the water the water sea green there. I'm gonna add some more yellow to this color here and maybe just make a little higher concentration in the back. I'm doing it like a light wash, but I don't want to get rid of some of that blue and I don't want to get rid of my my waves that I have there. Maybe the waves can come off the edge of the page so that it doesn't look like two spots and then, okay. There we go. I just have to see though. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we'll do is we're gonna let this rest and let it settle a little bit. Uh, I don't really want that hard line, so I'm just gonna scrumble next to the hard line so it doesn't dry hard, but I wanna leave some white lacy area and it's that zigzag. So come up to the white line, but I'm using just water and I'm kind of zigging some lacy area through. Zigzag. Do you see it, how it's zigzagging through? Let's just go and make our foam and this will help. I'm using the flat brush, Laura. We decided we were gonna use a flat brush, but if you don't have one, use your, your biggest brush. You also uh, would like not to use, don't use your mop brush because the mop brush is too watery. So 
So I've mixed that color. I gotta clean up my palette a little bit. I might come back to it, but so I don't wanna get rid of it. But we're gonna mix another color. We're gonna mix, we're gonna use your cad red. So it's kind of a warm cad red. I'm gonna put a pile on my Do mix it on the on the on your palette before we put it on here. Cad red, and then you have a um, your raw sienna. So make put some raw sienna here on the edge, and make sure you have plenty because if you you don't if you run out, you want to be able to um, already have it to go back and dip in. And then you're gonna grab your yellow ochre. Now you'll find different people do different colors for the sand. I, I pointed out the different colors in sand because I want you to know that you can pick what's pleasing to your eye. So we know the yellow and maybe just have a look up here real quick and watch me while I mix it. I know the yellow is the lightest one. So I'm gonna tap into this raw sienna and I'm going to tap into the red and I'm going to just mix it and I got too much red there so I'll clean out my brush and go back to the yellow ochre and push that in and then I'm just going to keep mixing it till I get a brown or a sandy brown that I enjoy. If you want yours lighter put more yellow. If you want it more red put more red. If you want it raw sienna put raw sienna but make a pile big enough Okay, it looks really red on the palette. I, I believe when I'm going to grab some more yellow, I would use the uh, yeah, I just grabbed uh, the wrong yellow grab the yellow ochre. This also is a good formula for skin. If you ever need to make if you want to play with a skin color, and then you can go around and add whatever colors you need to make a different skin. If you want it more brown or if you want it more white or if you want it more red. Okay, I think that's kind of nice. It may need a little more brown, but we'll know. So what I'm going to do is um, it's, I'm going to get my, clean my brush off, the flat brush, clean it off, and then go ahead and just wash along the edge of that pencil line. We're going to want to hide that pencil line. We don't want that pencil line to show. So I'm, I'm getting it wet on wet. I'm really getting this underneath the sand part really wet. Okay, grab your, the thickest part of your sand color and maybe the darkest, like if you need to add a little burnt sienna and go along the edge on your pencil mark because we don't really want that to show at all. And if it has to be a little thicker, go ahead and make it a little thicker so that it sits on the pencil line. I notice mine is pretty dark. We're just going to touch it along the water edge because that's where the foam is touching the beach. And this, uh, Laura, is something that this is good practice for you for your flowers. This is one of the things. Do you see now I have this edge here, guys? Now I'm going to take water and I'm just going to touch underneath it and let it spill out. Let it spill down. Let it fill into this area down here. And it, it's going to get lighter as it gets further down to the edge of the paper. As it comes away from the edge of the water, it's gonna get lighter. If you need to lift up and you want it to move a little more, you can. Look, I'm just dropping some water in, I'm letting it move. Now, I noticed that some of my darker edges got a little bit washed. So I will go ahead and I'm going to grab raw sienna directly because I really don't want that pencil to show. And maybe to get the curvy edge, I'll use a round brush. Maybe you, you are happy with the square brush. 
can see how it's darker right up against the pencil and then it gets lighter as it goes down. So, 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 so pretty. Okay, how, how's yours come along? I'm gonna grab with the round brush and just add some water and let it just bleed out. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. <clears throat> if you need to push it back this way, like put the, move your board up and down, move it sideways, let that sand move around a little bit, have fun with it. This is what's so fun about watercolor. I like getting some of that streaky movement Okay, so now look, I'd like you to take <clears throat> just your yellow ochre and put it on your brush so that it's like a milky consistency on the brush and then just tap a few split places in the water here, just a few taps. And notice how the wetness is gonna blur it out. I got a couple on my page up here. That's fine. I'll just take that off. But notice how the wetness is just going to blur it out. It's not going to be spotted, but it's adding some dimension to the sand. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now with that mixture, that brown mixture you have, maybe more yellow ochre, lots of water. I gotta really thin it out, want just a real light beige. We're just going to remember that zigzagging through the water. This one has a, a high concentration of green, our picture, but I'm going to now with this brown, just do some little waves of brown like this, just kind of, and it's gonna need to angle this way. If your brush marks are looking too even, just mix them up a little bit. Just think of the white space as the zigzag, what that white space is gonna look like. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry. And if you still have your green blue mixture on the other side of your, down here on your palette, come, if you look at this picture, I don't know if I can zoom in enough to show you, but if you look at this picture, notice how, where the wave is, see the wave? Mm -hmm. How big you want that wave is how much dark you're gonna put. I have pretty two really good splashy looking waves here. And that was just with, with the paper towel. So I'm gonna go underneath that wave with a little bit of a darker color, maybe go through it a bit and just play with it and make that look like a darker of that green, blue water. So it looks like this is a wave and stretch it out a little bit. 
if it's too white, if you look at it and you're like, oh, that's really white in there, go ahead and do some watered down uh, dabs, like scrumble through that wave, because the wave is not pure white. It's kind of scrumbled. Now, I have, must have some yellow in my wave here. So I'm going to go back to that bright uh, blue green mixture that we made and, and make it again because mine's looking really yellow. It's warm. The brown is warm. And it could be because I can't really see my painting because of the um, the lights are off. But OK, I like that. That's That's better. See how it's kind of stopping as well? It's not going past, it's not dripping. And what's white is staying on top. So then come over here. It's almost like, remember when we did the clouds? Remember how we went underneath the cloud to make it look like it was the darker cloud that we're doing the same thing with this wave. Now, if it's gonna be a big wave coming up and rolling, which we'll do that one day, it's going to show light. It's going to have the light coming through that. But here we're just doing, it's just coming close to shore and it's just scrumbling along. And take it off the edge of the page too. That's kind of nice. So the, the dark color kind of made the light color look white. Because we left the the white in the paper. Do you see it? It's layering again. Remember how we let that dry? We came down here to the sand and now we're letting the sand dry and we'll let this wave dry. Okay, with that same dark color, let's look at the wave huh. and see how the wave see how the the waves are there's a lot of white but it's that zigzag pattern that we talked about that's where the sand is going to kind of show through there's white you see my white so i'm going to go ahead and just do a couple not outline the white area but go go on the edge with the darker green just really lightly Go over some of the blue and do that rough zigzag. Remember that what this is doing is, is uh, underlying, showing how thick the, the showing how thick the foam is because we're really just if you see some white, just underline it a little bit, but make it zigzag through so it's like feathering through like the foam does. But I'm doing it under the white. So the white will be on top of this. And please don't make it even, make it really random. And it does, it zigzags out even into the green part over here. Where the foam is zigzagging through, that's how shallow the water is. So I would even take some of these lines and go right into the deep part not deep, before your big waves, before the waves you just made, in, in between that, the wave and the shore. Just take a minute, look at the picture. Step back from it, let it sit there for a minute. Less is more. <laughs> You know that saying. I see I lost some white here in my cloud space. I'm gonna, or uh, in the wave space. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick some up of that with the paper towel so it softens it. Just a little bit. for those who don't have white. And then I'll show you how to make it foamy without the white. You take like a little bit of a dirty water, kind of make it some gray. And you know how to make gray is just like on my palette. We 
need it more of a real light consistency. We really need it less paint and just light and touch some, if it's too dark, grab more water. Just touch some areas of the white to scrumble in and lift up with your paper towel. Scrumble in and lift up with your paper towel. Very random. Right, ne right here next to that line, we want it, the foam, we want it thick. So we're scrumbling in to make it look like it's puffy. I, I'm d dropping it in and then wiping it up. Just dabbing it. Drop in and dab. You see how it, it breaks up the white a little bit so it's not pure white? So it looks the gray part of the, the foam, but there's definitely got to stay some white. Just kind of adding some darker spaces to the sandy. <clears throat> Remember how this zigzagged through? And then if you look at this thick foam, see all the colors in there? Do you see how the bigger, the, the stronger the contrast between this dark and that foam makes it look thick? And then do you see there's some gray spots in the foam? And that's kind of what you're doing with your light gray wash. You're, you're just putting it in some parts that are really look close. All right, so that's, if you're happy with that, if you feel like you need to play a little more, you can. We wanna make our, our, um, our zigzags. Okay, so notice how my waves up here have kind of washed out. <coughs> I, mm -hmm. I wanna break them up. I don't want them to be perfectly even. So I'm gonna grab some more color and I'm gonna pull it out so that it's broken up. It's not a solid straight line. One day we'll do a really rough sea. That'll be really cool. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. I would, for, for this one, I'm going to take the, before we do the whole white thing, I'm gonna make a, a brown that use that red, those reds and that yellow and really stir it up. Maybe add some of this green that I had here. I really want some of these areas. I don't want like, I, don't like my pencil showing. So I'm gonna make some of the areas a little even darker where I really want that foam to look like it's big. Now, do I do the whole straight row of it? No, you don't want that. It, that will look fake because it's not all one big fat foam. It does thin out. So just put it like where the curves are that are going away from you. Like just do some. Uh, and then maybe skip over here because that makes it look a little more realistic. If it's all one straight line, then it doesn't look too realistic. Hey. Yeah, there you go. 
Okay. I have to pick up some because I didn't I didn't want that straight line there. So I'm just taking the paper towel and picking it up. I'd like that to be a little deeper curved. It's really fun just practicing and, and taking a minute and look at it. If you need to drag some of that color out, just drag the water, pull it out. I also would like some more. Uh, spots. So I'm going to take this dark color and and then drop those little spots in there because while it's wet, <laughs> I re-wet it. I did get some spots up here. Just wipe them out. Just tap, tap it with your paper towel. You could take your toothbrush if you want to toothbrush those in. Soon, one day, you're going to be able to paint your little, a little kid on here. So with that really dark brown that I made, not real too dark, a little watery, I'm going to go ahead and even under some of this dark green that I used, I'm going to go ahead and do some zigzagging. just to add like five spots and not even. See how that just adds a little bit of flavor to it? If it's even and all the way through, it'll look fake. So in this case, less is more and it will dry lighter than, than it is. So that's okay. This wave, I think the sun is behind here. So I need this foam to be higher on this side. And on this side, I need it to be higher. And the way to make it higher is that a darker line here and here and up here. Because this, the sun is going to cast on that part. And then that wave, I've got to grab some more of this blue green. And this wave has to be a little darker, but it's reaching up here. It's, it's reaching up and then just starting to turn over. It's the edge of the wave that's darker. Okay. And, and kind of straightening it out, like spreading it out, because it doesn't start and stop in one spot necessarily, does it? Okay, so those of you who have the white, if your painting's mostly dry, clean your brush off. Use your clean water and um, kind of reconstitute your white. Make it a thick pasty. Okay, so now with the thick pasty, I'm going to go right here up on the edge and I'm just, uh, what do you call scrumble? Yeah, scrumbling. Just the same zigzag scrumble that we did before. I'm not going to let it blend in with the blue brown that I have in the sand. If it does, just let that go. But go ahead and put some big puffy parts here. And then on your waves up here, go ahead and add some bright white scatter, not perfectly even. Maybe with the white watercolor, Roseanne, you can make a real thick pasty mixture. Don't use any water once you get your thick pasty mixture and just put it on top of the brown and on top of the green zigzag that you made and see if it looks like foam to you. Oh, mine bled a little, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it up with a paper towel. Still a little wet for where I had my sand. 
just experiment. If it's too wet, don't go near there and come back to it later. And you need some out here too. You need where we did the green out here. We need to zigzag some of that in. Only where you put your white spots, where you already left the white. If it trails in, that's okay too, because I think I have to let it dry. I think I'll add another layer of white like down in here where it dries. Sometimes if it's too wet, you won't get that effect that you want. I also want a little darker under the wave up here. I want that to be that's a little too dark. Have your paper towel at hand and always scoop it up if it's too much. Oh yeah, I like that better, but I also need some of this blue somewhere else. So go ahead and add it somewhere else too so that it's Paper towel, pick up, got too dark. There you go. I like that a little better. Do you guys like it? I just added a little darker and then had to bring the darker back out here in the back to make that weight, those waves pop. 